Welcome to the last week of February heading into March as the springtime approaches. We'll be again looking at some nicer conditions for outside for cleaning up for conservation and for taking care of the local environment. And we'll take a look at that coming up here about what you can do to get involved in just a little bit. This is our Your Environment blog. I began this project back in about the 1990s at the first TV station that I worked at in uh, Topeka, Kansas at KTKA TV 49. This was a regular Friday night segment that we featured, and we try to tackle topics about anything involving recycling, uh, conservation efforts, anything in the way of cleanups of local state parks and lakes, and anything in the way of toxic waste recycling and what people could do at home to make the world a better place. Your neighborhood, your city, your town, your state, wherever, this is your opportunity to get involved and see again what's going on out there. And this is our effort to give you information about what's going on, but you can help out too. If you'd like to drop any information about upcoming events, uh, recycling efforts at schools that people can get involved in, uh, conservation artwork contests, anything of that nature. We'd love to know about that and tell everybody about that on the Your Environment section of the WREG website. If you'd like to send those to me, again, austin.onic at wreg.com. Tons of stuff to talk about on there. And again, thank you very much for joining us for this last week's edition uh, into February. Ton of stuff coming up as we go into around March. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit, including Earth Hour. That's going to be starting in just about 33 days. What is it and how you can get involved in that? We'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little bit. Taking a look again right now at our fragile planet from the International Space Station. They've got cameras all aboard the space station that allow you to see when the space station is in daylight, what you're looking at as the space station orbits the Earth. Uh, you can see some nice, uh, what looks like uh, possible thunderstorm clouds down there at the bottom. Uh, don't have an exact location at this point in time for uh, the space station, but a beautiful view of the big blue marble. And if you'd like to see this, all you have to do is go to nasa.gov uh, for more information, and they have tons of information available. And all you have to do is go to uh, nasa.gov and click on the multimedia section for more on that neat little way to see our planet uh, just about any point in time during the day, or at least day where they happen to be, nighttime when they move on through. They get several sunrises and sunsets per day. You can see a lot going on through there. Currently, again, good air quality in the Mid-South. That last storm system that came on through swept things around very nicely. And again, we're looking at some good conditions for both today and also into tomorrow from what it looks like. Very low pollution levels at this time and nothing showing up in the way of ozone pollution for the Mid-South area. So very happy to talk about that. If you haven't seen this before, this is a very neat website to take a look at. It's called earth.nullschool.net. Net. If you'd like to see that, or if you've missed any of these websites on here, again, you can email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. This is a great website to take a look at where it comes to winds and also, again, a lot of other things like this. This particular section is showing you, again, the latest storm system. The latest one we had come on through the last couple of days is rolling through parts of Canada and the northeasterly states. We also have a large storm system dipping across portions of the North Atlantic and another storm system that is on its way back across the northern Pacific around the Bering Sea. And that could be, again, swinging our direction over the next several days. So we could be looking for some changes coming up there. Now, not only that, we can also see, again, uh, the potential of a lot of other stuff, including looking at things like particulates. You can see, again, dust in the atmosphere. You can see, again, a lot of what we are taking a look at here when it comes to things like dust. And why is this important? Well, in the environment from Africa, a lot of this dust that swings in off of the Sahara can make its way off into the Atlantic, and that can do a pretty good job of squashing anything in the way of hurricane development. So that's kind of neat to be able to take a look at. But for tonight's topic, I wanted to concentrate on the oceans. You can see a little bit more about how the ocean currents work, and more importantly, again, 
how they transform heat and transport it around the area, keeping again the very warm waters of the Gulf Stream going up to the North Atlantic. And then as that water gets colder, it sinks down to the lower depths and that conveyor belt keeps on moving all the way on through the entire planet. So we have a very active ocean that helps to transport heat, balance our temperatures, and this comes in very handy to keep us safe on our particular chunk of rock here. But keeping it safe is also something that you can get involved in, including uh, practical seafood removal from the ocean to feed people properly. Unfortunately, there's a lot that's being done to destroy the ocean food chain. And we need to be able to tell our governments that this needs to be protected to protect the environment on here. Groups like Oceana at Oceana.org are a good place to go to to learn more about healthy and sustainable seafood practices. Climate change is also causing problems with the ocean. It's causing the waters of the ocean to warm up. Climate is causing species to move to various locations. National Geographic does a very good job of keeping track of a lot of this information. And you can see very easily how the climate has changed the ocean temperatures out across the globe. As we look for some of these temperatures, again, very warm in some locations, but that warm water is making its way into colder sections as the ocean holds more heat from all the carbon that we are dumping into the atmosphere. So that's something, again, to really take a look at. And part of the problem is, of course, us and we could help out on that. We also have a problem again with overfishing. BBC Earth has some very good information about what this looks like because there's a lot of governments that allow the illegal amounts of fishing to go on out into the ocean. Now, a lot of these are legal fishing vessels, but a lot of them are not. And if we overfish the oceans, it's a good possibility that we're gonna run into some problems with the food chain because of the fact that there won't be enough fish to sustain the food chain. And if that causes a problem out there for the other species, what's it gonna do for billions of people who eat those fish if they're no longer there? So if you wanna to go to globalfishingwatch.org, good place to go to on that. Also again, learning about animals like sharks that have been around for many, many millions of years. And again, about 12 people are killed by sharks every year. That makes headlines, but 100 million sharks are killed by humans every year, and that's decimating the populations. And again, that's something else that we can help to, t to take a look at. Not to mention all the garbage we dump out into the ocean. The oceans have great big gyres, many times larger than the state of Texas, where garbage collects our garbage, not from any other species out there. So what can you do to help on things like this? Well, National Geographic has some good ones, and a lot of other places have suggestions about what you can do, about minding how much energy you use, choosing seafood carefully, using less plastic, picking up after yourself at the beach or wherever you happen to be. The garbage that we see washing down the street will ultimately wind up in our rivers and then into the ocean. So there's a whole bunch of ideas that you can do to help out on this. We're all in this together on this planet and we need to take care of it and there's some great suggestions out there to do so. Some of that from local, from Memphis uh, Recycling, from the Solid Waste Division of Memphis, Tennessee government at memphistn.gov about how to separate and collect the right plastics for the right recycle bin. Good opportunity to see more there at memphistn.gov. Wolf River Conservancy has got a lot of events coming up, including Friday, March 1st, the Arbor Day celebration, and also again, the uh, pickups of the trash into the Wolf Harbor cleanup coming Saturday, March 23rd. You can go to wolfriver.org for more there. Chickasaw Group of the Sierra Club, We'll be holding a training session in Nashville about how you can speak to legislators about what is important with the environment. That's coming up on March 5th. If you'd like to know more, sierraclub.org, Chickasaw Group for more. Nature class is available through the Memphis Pink Palace Museum System at the Lichterman Nature Center on Quince. Good opportunity to see that going on in motion. And don't forget, Memphis City Beautiful has got tons of details about how you can report littering to the people that are doing it. Don't confront them. Send their license plate to Memphis City Beautiful and let them take care of it on there. 33 days until Earth Hour. You can get involved in that if you'd like to know again more about that. Good opportunity to see more uh, on that at this time. And again, it's about 33 days away, your opportunity to turn off the lights and to save power. And we'll talk more about that coming up in the next few days. 
From the rainforest site, so far so good. We're doing pretty good right now with 62 million square feet being saved by just you clicking on that big green button. So your opportunity to help on that. And again, get ready for Earth Hour. We'll have more about that coming up in the course of the next several days. More information about all this is available again at WREG.com slash weather slash environment. We'll have enough again on the rest of this next week and plenty more opportunities for more for you to do to help save the environment coming up in March. From downtown Memphis at News Channel 3, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik on Your Environment.